Good morning, everyone. I'm Miss Sarah, Youth Services Librarian at Rolling Hills Library, Belt Branch. I'll be presenting story time for you this morning. Yes, I am a little dressed up. We had a throwback day at the library, so um, going for 80s prom dress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's been fun. Just a reminder for our closing song, you are going to want to grab a scarf, washcloth, hand towel, tissue, something for our dancing scarf blues. But our first song is B-I-N-G-O by the Wiggles. So let's get started with that. Hey, that sounds like Bingo the Barking Dog. Hey, Bingo! There was a farmer had a dog and Bingo was his name Oh, B-I-N-G-O 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 And Bingo was his name Oh, Now this time when we spell Bingo Clap your hands with us Ready this to is clap? gonna be fun. <laughs> there was a farmer had a dog and Bingo was his name. Oh, B I N G O, B I N G O, B I N G O, and Bingo was his name. Oh, <laughs> good job. Hey, that was fun. Do Let's do it again. Time. What do you think, Bingo? <laughs> There was a farmer had a dog and Bingo was his name oh B I N G O B I N G O B I N G O and Bingo was his name oh Good job Oh that was great clapping thanks Bingo Good job thank you for joining me in that song Okay let's figure out our letter of the day using our letter puzzle so, who can tell me this animal? Mm hmm it's a lion! Are you roaring like a lion? Okay, this boy is eating a particular meal. It's not breakfast, it's lunch. Okay. What are these green things? Mm -hmm. Leaves. And this is a lamb. Mm -hmm. Ooh, this is where I am right now. The library! This is a ladybug. So what is our letter today? It's the letter L. We're going to talk about laundry today. <laughs> I promise, no folding included. So let's get our finger pencils out and we're going to make the letter L. So we're going to start here at the top and go down and then make a little line over and off. Just like that. The letter L. Okay, let's try it again. So up here at the top, straight line down and little line over. Just like that. The letter L for laundry. So our first book is titled Laundry Day by Jessica Bagley. I'm bored, said Tick. Me too, said Tack. Laying out in the sun. Why don't you two read a book? You love to read, said Ma Badger. We've read all our books, said Tick. Then we read them backward, said Tack. Have you tried reading a book backwards before? Mm-hmm. I think that'd be an interesting endeavor. Well, how about building a fort, asked Ma Badger. We already made one, said Tick. Then we invaded it, and it fell apart, said Tack. What about fishing, said Ma Badger tiredly. We caught all of the fish in the pond, said Tick. Then we let them go, said Tack. Well, would you like to help me hang the laundry, said Ma Badger. Laundry? Tick asked, looking surprised. We haven't done that yet, said Tack. Okay, they chimed together. You think Badgers are going to be good at laundry? Let's 
see. Let me show you how. Take the wet clothes and sheets out of the basket. Don't let them fall on the ground. Then take the clothespins and clip them on the line. Like this? Asked Tad a tick. That very good, said Ma Badger. It's so easy, shouted Tack from the other end of the clothesline. Will you boys finish hanging the laundry for me while I go to the market? Asked Ma Badger. Sure, Ma, chirped Tick and Tack. Tick and Tack quickly went to work hanging every shirt, sock, sheet, and sweater that was in the basket. That was fun, but we're out of laundry, said Tick. Hmm, I have an idea, said Tack. They're not out of clothespins, though. We can hang the winter clothes and blankets, said Tack. Good thinking, said Tick. Once those items were hung, Tick and Tack looked at the line. That's it, we're out of clothes and sheets, said Tick. But we're not out of twine, said Tack with a grin. See, there's more tied around the tree. And a squirrel. I think he's playing swingy. Tick and Tack ran inside and each grabbed an apple barrel full of odds and ends from the house and started to hang them up. This is great, shouted Tick. It sure is. What else is there, asked Tack. Can you see what they hung up on the clothesline? I see a carrot and an umbrella. There's a map, a plate. Do you see a hair comb? Yeah. They went a little wild here. They ran all over the house gathering every whatnot, bauble, and trinket they could find. They picked up every knick-knack, this and that, bric-a-brac in the house. They grabbed buckets and books. They pilfered the pots. They pirated pillows. They looted lampshades and even took the toaster. Wow. They hung uh, everything they could find that wasn't nailed down. <gasps> They hung up the goldfish, the toilet paper, the newspaper. I don't think the checkers stayed on the chess, the checkerboard very well. Mm -mm. Nope. We're really good at this, said Tick proudly. I'm impressed with myself, said Tack. But this just then, Ma came home from the market. Do you think she's going to like everything that they hung out? Tick and Tack, what have you done? She hollered. Um, we hung up the laundry, said Tick. Uh, and a few other things, said Tack. Well, I'm not sure how you did it, said Ma Badger, but you forgot a couple of things. What did they forget? Didn't they hang up everything? I'm bored, said Tick. Me too, said Tack. I wonder if Ma needs help with the laundry. The end. Okay, so our felt set today is about laundry, of course, and Mrs. Nellie McNosh. So each Monday morning at dawn, Mrs. Nellie McNosh brings out a barrel and she does a big wash. It takes her all morning and when the sun's high, she hangs what she's washed on the clothesline to dry. So she hangs up the dresses, some of which stay on the line better than others. She hangs up the shirts. She hangs up underwear, nightgown, and skirts. She hangs up stockings shoes. I kind of like that red and white spotted one myself. She re rings out the paper and hangs up the news. She hangs up the dog, his dish, and, pardon me, his bone. She gets a wrong number, so she hangs up the phone. She hangs up a hat. She hangs up an old wedding gown, two sleepy bats upside down. She hangs up a lamp, a large Christmas wreath, and Grandpa McNosh's 
removable teeth. She hangs up a kite by the tip of its tail, of course. Then the mailman delivers the mail, so she hangs up the mail, of course. And then she hangs till she's hung every last thing in sight, including the turkey she's roasting for dinner that night. So each Monday by dusk, Mrs. Nellie McNosh has finally hung up the last of her wash. She takes off her apron, she lets down her hair, then hangs herself up in a comfortable chair. I think Mrs. Nellie McNosh is rather like our badger friends, Tick and Tack. Just a little bit maybe. Okay, so our next book is Theodore, The Adventures of a Smudgy Bear. And this is by Edward and illustrated by Julie. Lucy really loved her bear, Theodore, but sometimes she was careless with him. Theodore didn't mind. He was an old, experienced bear, comfortably smudgy, who knew that it was part of life to be forgotten in the now and then in a closet or under the cellar stairs. And Lucy always made it up to him with something special. She would take him to bed or give him a tea party, which made him more comfortably smudgy than ever with jam in his hair. She may be careless now and then, Theodore thought, but she understands bears. One morning, Lucy tried to dress Theodore in her pajamas. They were much too big for him. She went outside to play, leaving Theodore on the floor buried in pajamas. Honestly, that girl, said Lucy's mother when she came into Lucy's room. Maybe it's a wee bit messy in there. When is she ever going to learn to pick up her clothes? She collected pants, shirts, socks, and underwear, tossing them on top of the pajamas, then scrunched them all up together. She didn't notice that Theodore was inside the bundle. She dropped the clothes in the laundry basket. Ho-hum, Theodore thought after several days in the laundry basket. Being a bear is a comfortable life, but a little dull sometimes, I guess. I might as well take a nap until Lucy finds me again. Theodore dreamed that Lucy took him up for a ride in an aeroplane, but she was careless and forgot to strap him in. While she was showing him how to do an inside loop, he fell out. Now, wait a minute, Theodore thought as he tumbled over and over. This is no situation for a bear to be in. I'd better wake up. He did wake up, but he was still tumbling over and over. The clothes were tumbling around with him. Every few seconds, he would catch a quick look through a round window. On the other side of the window were Lucy's mother and father and some other people, sitting in a row, reading magazines. The horrible truth came to him. He was inside a washing machine at the laundromat. <gasps> oh no, poor Theodore. Help, cried Theodore in a bubbly voice as water poured in around him. Theodore couldn't think very clearly for the, during the next half hour, but he knew that he would much rather fall out of an airplane than be washed like this. He was drenched in very hot water. Soap suds got into his eyes and his ears. Buttons and zippers banged him on the nose. When the washing machine went into his final spin, he almost blacked out. Oh my, Theodore mumbled damply when everything was still and quiet again. Thank goodness that's all. Do you think that's gonna be all? Is Theodore done going round and round and tumble tumble? But that wasn't all. Lucy's father didn't know the right way to do laundry or he would have found Theodore. He pulled all the clothes out of the washer and a wad and without separating them or shaking them out, he threw them into the dryer. Rumble tumble, rumble tumble. Theodore found himself being tossed around in a fierce blast of heat. He cried, help, help, in a feeble voice and fainted. When he came to again, he was buried in red, hot clothes. Must get some air, he gasped, beginning to struggle. Lucy's father was pulling the laundry basket on Lucy's wagon, and the jolting helped Theodore fight his way free. He hung over the edge of the basket, trying to get back his breath. Suddenly, the wagon bounced, bounced over a curb, and Theodore fell out onto the sidewalk. Oh, no! In a few minutes, he revived enough to sit up. What a shock when he looked down at his arms and legs. His fur was so shiny and golden and fluffy that he couldn't recognize himself. Hmm, he thought, this doesn't look like me. 
It certainly doesn't feel right either. It doesn't feel bearish. Ah, here comes Lucy. Now everything will be all right. Lucy rode up quickly on her tricycle, then stopped and shook her head. A new bear, she said, sadly. I thought it was Theodore. It is me, Theodore squeaked, but Lucy had begun to ride away, and she didn't hear him. I knew it, said Theodore to himself. It's dangerous for a bear to be this clean. Something must be done. Just then, a dog came running and trotting by. May I beg your assistance, sir? Theodore asked. The friendly dog obliged by dragging him through the gutter for a while, then left him in a freshly spaded flower bed. Thank you, said Theodore. I'm feeling more bearish already. Two tomcats began to yowl at each other under the bushes nearby. Allow me to join your dispute, gentlemen, Theodore said. The catch obliged by fighting each other with Theodore in between. He was thoroughly scrubbed around in the dirt, and some of his fur was clawed off. Thank you, said Theodore. This is a vast improvement. A little boy with a lollipop found him next. Would you consider sharing that with me, young man? Theodore asked. The little boy obliged by trying to feed Theodore his lollipop. When he was through, Theodore was very gummy around the ears. His paws were stuck together. Thank you, said Theodore. This feels just like old times again. He looked up and saw Lucy running toward him as fast as she could. Theodore, Lucy cried. Where have you been, you naughty bear? I've been looking for you for days. She scolded him all the way home. Theodore loved it. Look, Lucy shouted to her mother. I found Theodore again. That's nice, said Lucy's mother. My goodness, he's dirtier than ever. I have an idea. Why don't you let me take him to the laundry next week and run him through with the clothes? Oh, no, Theodore thought. Lucy considered for a moment. No, she said finally. I saw a new clean bear a little while ago, and he didn't look happy. See how happy Theodore looks? He likes being smudgy. Oh, all right, said Lucy's mother. It's your bear. Well, Theodore thought with a tremendous sigh of relief as he and Lucy hugged each other. She may be careless at times, but she does understand bears. The end. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish off our laundry story time with our closing song. This is the Dancing Scarf Blues by Carol Peterson. Put your scarf to the side, then back the other way. Keep your scarf a moving now, you can sway. You got the blues. Start to the front and then to the back. Careful, keep it moving. Don't you give me no flag? You got the blues. You got the dancing scarf blues. Yeah. Just keep your scarf from moving. You got the dancing scarf blues. Twirl your scarf around. It's called the dancing scarf blues. Then jump up and down and up and down and up and down. Freeze! Don't move a muscle, I'm watching you. Shake your scarf way up high, then shake it down low. Shake up and down and up and down, look at you go. You got the blues. You got the dancing scarf blues, yeah. Just keep your scarf from moving. You got the dancing scarf blues. Yeah. Good job. Thank you for joining me. See you next week.